Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are going to be doing a comparison review between a new Aveeno product line and the Neutrogena Hydro Boost product line, specifically their fragrance-free products. So I have had a lot of requests from you guys to look into Aveeno as a brand and do an Aveeno brand review. I have to be honest, I have had a really hard time finding products any products at all that I want to use and recommend to you guys until I discovered this line. So this is what we're gonna take a look at today. And I thought it would be interesting to compare this to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost line because as I was using the products, I started to feel like they were almost the same exact thing. And I know that this is a fan favorite. So if you guys wanna hear my thoughts on the Aveeno Calm and Restore Nourishing Oat Cleanser and Oat Gel Moisturizer and how it compares to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Fragrance Free Cleanser and Moisturizer, you're in the right spot. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's start off by talking through both of these cleansers and we'll just read through some high level product information, a couple bullet points first about each cleanser so we can really get a feel for what the brand is claiming. So let's start off with the Vino. Their Calm and Restore Nourishing Oat Cleanser claims to be for sensitive skin. It's fragrance free. It says it gently cleanses and hydrates to preserve the skin's moisture barrier. It has 7.8 fluid ounces of product in it and there's kind of a wide range of price points online. So I'm seeing anywhere from around $8.49 to $11.99. And then on Aveeno's website, in the product overview, they say it's a gentle hydrating facial cleanser. It's hypoallergenic for irritated sensitive skin and contains nourishing oat and calming fever few. Comparing that to Neutrogena's cleanser, again, this is called their Hydro Boost Gentle Cleansing Lotion. This is specifically their sensitive skin version, which is fragrance free. They also have another Hydro Boost cleanser that is not fragrance free, so just be on the lookout for that. It says it effectively removes impurities for soft, supple skin with hyaluronic acid. This one has five fluid ounces of product in it and retails for $9.99. A couple bullet points on Neutrogena's website are that this will cleanse away dirt, oil, grime, impurities, and bacteria. It will cleanse and hydrate in one step. It also says it's suitable for sensitive skin and also claims to be hypoallergenic. So we do have a couple of the same callouts between both of these cleansers, but nothing identical as far as the overall theme of each product. And that's definitely not not what made me want to do a comparison review. The description, the labeling, the packaging, none of that really made me think that these would be all that similar. But as I started to dig into the ingredient label and also just test out the product and get a feel for the formulation, that's where I started to notice some overlap. So I wanna talk through ingredients as always with you guys and start off with the top five ingredients in both of these cleansers. You guys will clearly see that we have a lot of overlap there. The top five is actually almost identical between these two cleansers. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys on the screen up here what the top five ingredients are between both of these cleansers because you can see for yourself that there's a lot of overlap there. We'll dive into each one briefly in a second. But I did want to quickly clarify that comparing these labels side by side, yes, can tell us where we have ingredient overlap. And when we're looking at the top five or six, that gives us an idea, again, of what ingredients are going to make up the bulk of the formulation. But that doesn't tell me how much of each ingredient is present. So that's not something that I can directly compare or understand in looking at a label. Hopefully that makes sense. So we can clearly see there are a lot of the same exact ingredients here. I mean, almost all of them are in both cleansers. So water and glycerin are the top two ingredients in both cleansers. Glycerin is a humectant, so it's a great hydrator for the skin. And then the cleansing agents or surfactants are the same as well. So they have funny names, polysorbate 20, poloxmer 188, but the good thing about them is that they are gentle yet effective cleansing agents. So things that should not be stripping or irritating or drying to the skin, which definitely help to back up the claims that both of these have that these are safe safer for sensitive skin. The biggest difference is that this Neutrogena cleanser also has another surfactant in it that is not present here. It's called another funny one, sodium hydrolyzed potato starch, and that has cornstarch as a thickener, whereas this doesn't have an additional cleansing agent, but in place of that has oat kernel flour, which is a great, great ingredient for the skin. And honestly, I feel like I could sit here for 30 minutes going on and on about the benefits that oats have for our skin, but I'm obviously not going to do that to you guys. So I'll just summarize by saying, oat kernel flour is so great if you have dry or irritated or sensitive skin because it's an anti-inflammatory ingredient, it's an antioxidant, it helps to calm and soothe the skin, protect the skin, soften and smooth, it's just, Mm. So if you're on the lookout for a skincare ingredient that's going to help to calm, soothe, moisturize, nourish, and decrease inflammation all in one, look no further. Oats. 
So those are the ingredients that both of these cleansers have in common between the top five to six. But as we travel down the rest of these labels, I mean, <laughs> there's so much more in common. And while the rest of these ingredients aren't really things that I need to separately call out because they're not really noteworthy, they're just kind of basic ingredients to help to make these cleansers cleansers. A lot of them, again, are identical. So same kinds of preservatives and thickeners and texture enhancers. And I actually find it interesting because both of these cleansers also have the same exact last ingredient on the label, which is sodium hyaluronate. And I would say that's the one other ingredient that deserves a separate shout out because it's the salt form of hyaluronic acid. So great hydrator that will help to plump the skin. But definitely a bummer that it's last on the label and especially in the case of this cleanser because that is the highlighted ingredient. That's the whole point of this Hydro Boost range is the hyaluronic acid, which they list right on the front of the label there. So to see that it's very last on the label and a small concentration is definitely, it's definitely a bit of a letdown. So after looking at both of these cleansers in detail and seeing how similar they are, I have to say that I do feel a little bit more impressed with the Aveeno Calm and Restore Cleanser. And if I had to pick one over the other, I would recommend this Aveeno Cleanser. Does that mean that this Neutrogena Cleanser is bad or you shouldn't purchase it or you should stop using it? Definitely not. I think it's a really good drugstore option still and one that I have enjoyed using. And I love the fact that both of these are free from fragrance and essential oils, truly because that's not the case with the rest of the products from these brands. They have a lot of products with added fragrance and or essential oils. So that just, I mean, that always warms my heart. You guys know, especially in products that are marketed like this towards those with sensitive skin. But again, I think just the addition of oat kernel flour and especially that it's third on the label makes me really excited about this cleanser. If you're someone that does have sensitive skin, a lot of irritation, inflammation, this is totally one worth checking out. And then formulation of both of these, no surprise, Surprise is similar but this one I mean I think I also prefer this formulation as well it just feels something about it feels better to me on the skin they both have a lightweight formulation they both have kind of a gel like finish but I think this one is even more gel like in texture are we surprised that I prefer this after saying that. I'll show you guys here what these actually look like side by side. I literally put these on my hand like they're a lipstick swatch or something. So I wanted you guys to be able to directly compare. Very lightweight, I would say, cleansers, which I really enjoy. And they both are just kind of milky and creamy, but not too heavy or thick. Are these cleansers going to give you the most effective deep cleanse of your life? Definitely not. These are going to be for those of you that need something that's gentle on the skin, but still helps to remove some of that buildup. So I would definitely not rely on either of these for sunscreen removal or makeup removal of any kind. I just don't think they do a good enough job at that. But I think that's everything I have to say about both of these cleansers. Let's move right along. Next for their moisturizers. These, I mean, these even have like the same exact packaging. So the Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer also says for sensitive skin. This one has 1.7 fluid ounces of product in it and retails for $17.97 to $23.99 is the range that I'm seeing online. This one says it will soothe and hydrate sensitive, irritated facial skin. It's a gel moisturizer. It's lightweight. It has nourishing prebiotic oat and calming fever few and that it will moisturize for 24 hours. Compared to the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Cleanser, cleanser, no, moisturizer, and they call this their gel cream. This one says it's for extra dry skin and they call it the hyaluronic acid here as well. This also has 1.7 fluid ounces of product in it and retails for $21.49. Same thing here, Neutrogena also has the same exact product with added fragrance. I have no idea why they do that. I think that's the one that says it's for dry skin versus this one which says it's for extra dry skin. I don't, I don't understand, but if you are looking for the one that is fragrance free, it's this one. All right, it's that time again. Let's pull out the top five, actually two top seven ingredients in both of these moisturizers and see how they compare. So the top two ingredients are exactly the same here, just in slightly different orders. So water is first in the Aveeno moisturizer. We have glycerin second again, followed by dimethicone, and then that's just flipped in the Neutrogena moisturizer. So water, dimethicone, glycerin. Those small things, again, that doesn't really matter. I'm just just showing you guys what we have in common. So dimethicone is a type of silicone. Silicones are great ingredients in skincare, especially moisturizers, because they help to protect our skin from transepidermal water loss. They actually kind of create a seal on the skin. They are occlusive ingredients that really help to lock in moisture long-term. So love to see that in a moisturizer. And then we also have an ingredient called Olive M1000. 
the names of these ingredients, I swear, that is in both of these as well. And that's actually a combination of two different esters from olive oil. And those two esters are called cedarol and sorbitin olivate. So combined, they form olive M1000, not to be confused with pure olive oil, not the same thing. Olive M1000 is a great ingredient or set of two ingredients that helps to facilitate barrier repair. It's a nourishing ingredient. It helps to calm and soothe the skin and also moisturizes. Awesome source of fatty acids. Love seeing that in an ingredient label as well. And then after that, we kind of have the same type of thing going on as we did with the cleansers where sodium hyaluronate is really the only other ingredient worth mentioning in this moisturizer. Again, more towards the bottom of the label. We also have oat kernel flour in the top five in this moisturizer. This one does have a couple other ingredients in it aside from the addition of feverfew. It also has panthenol, which is a really nice hydrator that helps to protect the skin. And actually I was very surprised to see has centella asiatica thrown in it, but very last on the label, which I just found weird because Avino actually doesn't call out that ingredient and that's definitely a noteworthy ingredient. I mean, I guess props to them since it's the last on the label, but Centella Asiatica is an awesome anti-inflammatory ingredient that has wound healing abilities. I would love to have seen that higher up on the label. Kind of a random throw in there that wasn't mentioned, but those are really the only other highlights here. So again, while we have some similarities, I also think that the Savino Moisturizer wins over the Neutrogena one as far as the ingredient label goes. And for whatever reason, I actually sometimes experience a little bit of stinging and burning in using this Neutrogena Moisturizer, so it's not one that's been a staple for me because of that. I don't really know what would be causing that because this is also fragrance and essential oil free. This one is as well, so I know that it's not that irritating my skin. Not really sure what that's about, but if you really enjoy the formulation of this and you have also kind of had a little bit of irritation in using it, then maybe you will have a better time using Avino's moisturizer because I'll show you guys little moisturizer swatches here as well. These are also so, so similar. I would say even more similar than the cleansers. I think if I had to pinpoint a difference between the two, it would just be that Avino's is a little bit thicker than Neutrogena's option, but they both have that really, really nice gel-like formulation that I know so many people, including myself, love. The thing about both of these is that if you have extremely dry skin, they are probably not going to be occlusive enough to really lock in that hydration and properly moisturize your skin for a long period of time. You probably could benefit from using something even thicker like CeraVe's Moisturizing Cream or the Vanna Cream Moisturizing Cream. I'll link a couple of videos below where I review those products, but just to keep that in mind, if you are really in need of some serious barrier repair, you could use these underneath a more thick occlusive product if you wanted to. I mean, I don't really know that there's a purpose in doing that with Neutrogena's. This, I would say there definitely is a purpose because of that oat kernel flour. So maybe if you used this underneath a little bit of the CeraVe healing ointment, or just something to really make sure you are moisturizing the skin long term. I think that this is moisturizing enough for me, but I have combo skin that leans oily. So I could see how this would not be moisturizing enough for somebody with incredibly dry flaky skin. All right, you guys, so that's everything that I wanted to cover as far as these products and how they compare. I hope that you guys found this as interesting as I did. I feel like once I started to realize the similarities, I was pulling out a magnifying glass to dig into it for you guys. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. And again, maybe if you really like these formulas, but they didn't quite agree with your skin you'll have better luck in using Aveeno. I definitely think Aveeno wins this battle but I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. Have you used any of these products? Are you interested in testing anything out after watching this video? If so I will make sure to have everything listed in my description box below in order of mention as always for you guys. If you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe and click on that notification bell and also send my channel to a friend. All of those things mean so much to me and really help to support me and my channel. If there's anything else you guys would like to see from me next don't forget to leave that request in the comments as well. I would be happy to do that for you. Otherwise Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days, so stay tuned for that. And until then, I hope you have a great few days.